But for those users who haven't yet upgraded from Intel, the new MacBook Pro will change the game in every way. First, it's up to a massive 11 times faster than the fastest Intel-based model. So let's go ahead and put that to the test. I'll first start off by showcasing the specifications of each of my MacBooks so you guys can keep that in mind when you are watching this video. And then I'm going to run through some various different use cases that you probably would be using the MacBook Pro for in real life practice and not necessarily for the high end graphic production that Apple showcases in their keynote events. So let's go ahead and start off and see how we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the specs. The one on the left is my Intel i9 MacBook, and the one on the right is the new Space Black M3 Max MacBook that I've just purchased. Okay, so let's start off with the price. When I first purchased the 2019 Intel i9, I fully maxed out the specs, so the cost came out to £4,500, which was not the cheapest MacBook purchase that I've ever made. And you can see this new M3 Max was only £3,600 and what I tried to do is to get as close as the specs as I can with my previous Intel i9 Mac so that I can get a very good comparison when I do a MacBook versus MacBook video. So if we look at the CPU, the i9 had a 2.4 GHz 8 core i9 processor chip and this one obviously has the M3 Max and it's 14 core. In terms of the GPU, it does have 64 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Now you have to remember that when you do look at Apple's new silicon based MacBooks, unified memory is not the equivalent to gigabytes of GPU memory that you find on Intel machines. So a 64 gigabyte GPU memory is not the same as a 64 gigabyte unified memory. There are slight differences, but doing a little bit of research online, 36 gigabytes of unified memory is as close as you can get to being equivalent of 64 gigabytes in an Intel machine. Now in terms of the graphics, my Intel i9 did come with AMD Radeon Pro 5600M, which was one of the highest specs that you can choose at that time. And it did come with eight gigabytes of HBM2 memory, which really made it the ultimate graphics option if you wanted to use the MacBook for gaming. The M3 Max has a 30 core GPU and a 16 core neural engine which of course is one of the highlights of the MacBook Pro, allowing it to be used as a top gaming laptop. Storage, I've kept the same on both. They were one terabyte SSD, and the display obviously is gone from a Retina display, now to a Liquid Retina XDR display with the new M3 Max MacBook Pro. Now, considering all of those specs, let's go ahead and see if this new MacBook Pro is actually 11 times faster in various different use cases. Okay, so test number one, is very simple, turning the MacBook on once it has been shut down and seeing how quickly it can get to the login screen. So I'm going to turn both of them on at the exact same time. And in fact, my Intel i9 did get to the menu screen a lot faster than the M3 Max. Now, if I go ahead and log in to each of these, let's see how quickly they load once you do get in to your desktop. Again, my Intel i9 actually managed to beat the M3 Max MacBook Pro to log in and show me my desktop before it starts opening up all of its windows and all of the apps that I've got set up as the login items. So even at this very basic test, I'm still yet to see the 11 times faster on the new M3 Max MacBook Pro. And of course, there are a lot of different variables that do contribute towards loading times and background apps that you may have running. but. Once I did set up my new M3 Max MacBook Pro, I used Migration Assistant and I transferred all of the exact same apps, data and settings, and I've utilized the same amount of storage by transferring all of my documents. So this is a very like-to-like -like comparison when I am testing all of these use cases. But nonetheless, one of the key areas to always have a look at processing power is to do a Geekbench scoring of each of these MacBooks, which I did on both the CPU and GPU. So let's go ahead and look at the results there. Okay, so let's start off with the CPU Geekbench scoring. You can see at the top, this is my Apple M3 Max with 14 cores. 
on a single core, the score is 3163 with 889 on the Intel based MacBook Pro. So this is around three and a half times more. And with the multi core scoring, this is around four times as much as it was with my Intel i9 as it is on the M3 Max. And you can see this is a significant difference. All of the different process computations that it ran to give you the scoring. It actually utilized all of the power of the machine to give yourself an idea of which is the more powerful machine and which can handle more processing power whenever it's required. And then when you move over to the GPU, you can see it is double the scoring. So around 35,000 compared to 76,000 on the M3 Max, you can see it is twice as fast when it comes to GPU processing. So that is a big difference, especially when it comes to using this MacBook Pro with playing gaming and using maybe Apple Arcade games. And we'll be testing playing a game on both of these machines and testing out the frame rates and the responses from both gameplays and see how they perform. But overall, the Geekbench tests do prove how faster the MacBook Pro with the M3 Max does actually perform under strenuous circumstances. Okay, so the next test, let's try and open up some apps and see how quickly they do open up fully. I'm gonna start off with Adobe Photoshop 2024. So if you are a graphics designer, this is a very high-end application which does tend to load up quite slowly depending on how fast your MacBook is. But these are very too fast MacBook Pros. But let's go ahead and see how much faster the M3 Max MacBook Pro can load Photoshop compared to my Intel i9. There you can see it's already open, it's ready to use on the M3 Max. It's still currently loading on my Intel. And there you have it. It was probably around two to three times faster, which is you know a very big upgrade for me anyway, personally. But I wouldn't say that that was around 11 times faster in any sense. But one other high-end application, if you are a content creator, is Final Cut Pro. And that does sometimes take a bit of time to load, even if you do have a lot of projects saved. I have two of the exact same projects in Final Cut Pro currently. So I'm going to now go ahead and open that and see which one opens first and how fast it opens compared to the next one. And there we have it. It's already open onto my M3 Max and you can see my edits and now it's just opened on my Intel i9. It was probably delayed by maybe another 10, 12 seconds at most. And that isn't something that I would see would warrant someone to maybe spend a lot of money to buy the new M3 Max, especially when you do have a MacBook Pro that is fully maxed out like this and is made to be very fast for many, many years of usage. Now I have been using this Intel i9 for the last four years and I've not had too many problems when I'm creating content and loading all of these high-end graphic applications. And you can see with just a few seconds difference, it feels like the M3 Max, with it being marketed as being 11 times faster than the Intel-based ones, I don't think that was the case. But what I do want to showcase is exporting a video file, which is going to be around three gigabytes and four minutes of length from Final Cut Pro to see which one renders the fastest and how quickly. Okay, both projects are now ready to export. So I'm going to go ahead and start the rendering. We'll go ahead and open up the background tasks and see which one completes the fastest. So the M3 Max has now gone past the 50% mark whilst the Intel i9 is still on the 22%. This is going to be kind of a make or break, especially when you are a content creator that is looking to buy a MacBook Pro. To be able to produce, download and upload all of your filming, your content that you've created and sharing it to social media sites like YouTube, this is actually going to make a big difference. So you can see this one is almost complete. And there we have it. It is now completed on the M3 Max, and we still haven't hit the 50% mark on the Intel i9. It's taking a lot longer. So when it does come to things like it being 11 times faster or even just 10 times faster, 
I can see that happening on a very large scale. So if you use your MacBook Pro for high-end filming production sets, and you've got a lot of things happening at the same time, whether it's not just Final Cut Pro, but you may also have other high-end graphics applications like the Adobe Suite, you may have After Effects, you may be using Lightroom, Photoshop, Illustrator to do a lot of graphics at the same time. This is where the M3 Max would excel to be able to handle all of those multitasking capabilities where the Intel-based MacBook might struggle a little bit. And you can see it's still rendering, it's still taking time to export. And there you have it, it's now completed. So it took a little bit longer than I would have liked compared to the new MacBook Pro. But I now know doing a test like this, that this is actually a very good purchase for people like myself that do create content and rely on export and upload speeds, especially when it takes a lot of time to create videos like this one. Okay, and one final test that I wanted to do is to play a game on each of these MacBooks because both of them do have high-end graphics capabilities and I wanted to see which one performs well. Of course, with the M3 silicon chip, there is a lot of games on the arcade store that are made for just M silicon chipset MacBooks, whereas some of them are not compatible with any Intel-based ones, even though your Intel-based MacBook Pro might be able to handle it. So when you have new games that are just released, like Resident Evil Village, for example, I can't play that or install it on my Intel i9, even though it might be capable enough to have really good gameplay on it. That's why I'm going to be using another racing game, which has a lot of action, a lot of fast paced movements, which is called Asphalt 9. And I'm going to start off by just opening both of them so you can see how quickly each of them open up. And then we'll go ahead and test the gameplay and see how smooth each plays side by side. So let's go ahead and open these. And there you go, M3 Max, it's already loading very quick and I'm into the game and now I can go ahead and start playing pretty much straight away it's just loading now on my Intel I would say overall it was probably twice or maybe close to just three times faster loading on my M3 Max MacBook Pro but nonetheless let's check out the gameplay and see how well it performs on each of these MacBooks Okay, so both gameplays right off the bat seem to be loading in perfectly fine, albeit the graphics look much better on the M3 Max, largely due to the XDR liquid retina display. You probably couldn't see, but there was just a couple of skipped frames at the start of the game on the Intel MacBook, but nothing too noticeable that would interfere with the gameplay in any way. And as you're watching both of these gameplays, both MacBooks seem to be handling them very well. So in fact, depending on the type of game you play on your MacBook, in this comparison, there isn't much difference in it. If you have a lower spec Intel based MacBook, then yes, you may start to notice variable differences, and even more so if you try it with high end AAA games. But for smaller non simulation or RPG games, I'd say both MacBooks handle it almost the same. So there you have it. Hopefully you found that comparison with real life use cases very useful for you. The Intel i9, I tried to match as closely as possible with the specs of the M3 Max, which is why in a lot of the cases, some of the loading times you can see were very comparable. And even if they have just a few seconds of difference, it might not be enough to warrant just a general customer to go ahead and buy the M3 Max. If you are going to be using your MacBook Pro for very high end graphics productions or content creation, and you need a lot of processing power for rendering very large gigabytes of video files and things like that, then this would be a very good option to have and to upgrade to the M3 Max MacBook Pro. Even if you go for the M3 Pro models, I think that would still be good enough for most of the scenarios that you'll probably use the laptop for. In my situation, I'm still yet to find any scenario where it is 11 times faster as Apple claimed. And from the keynote, you know, when they did mention that this is going to be 11 times faster than the fastest Intel based MacBook Pro, I went onto their website, I had a look at their blog, and I tried to find the specs of the exact MacBook that they are comparing that metric to. And it was exactly the same specs as the one I have here. So not sure what types of use cases they used to find out that this is 11 times faster, but I'm still yet to see. And if you are the type of person that does have an Intel based MacBook Pro, 
and are looking to upgrade, then maybe have a consideration of the specs of your current Intel-based MacBook Pro. Is it degrading quite badly? Are you spending a lot of time waiting for things to load or things to render if you use it for graphics or video production? Then upgrading to an M Silicon MacBook Pro is probably going to be the best way forward. But if I was someone that owns this Intel i9 fully maxed out, 